I'm sick. You can hear it in my voice. Like, I'm going through like a couple of toilet paper rolls. I think Ryan's breaking the record for how many toilet paper rolls to blow his nose in. I'm so sick. I'm what's known as a drama queen. So when Ryan's sick, it means it's the end of the world. I feel like the biggest victim on the planet and I want everyone to feel bad for me. I had a fever for the first time in years and we forced Matt to be here to film us yep. and he's inevitably going to get sick just through just, just proximity. Fine. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Just, Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Someone's got to. Always got to do it. What's crazy is Matt just climbed to the top of a 50-story building. Cold downtown LA last night got kicked out by security and that didn't make him sick. You would have thought like with the atmosphere and the air up there. And we were just getting sick on the bottom floor. How old is Matt? 21. Damn, he's young. Back when I was 21, I had energy for shit like that. These days... Yeah, I'm definitely getting to that stage where like... The older I get, I understand why my dad was looking out the windows with his arms behind his back. <laughs> Just staring there for hours, they're like, I get it now. <laughs> what was Matt doing climbing up the building at late at night? Yeah, so since moving to LA, got a big city. Never been in a big city before, so got to take advantage of it. And so me and a few friends, we hit some helipads downtown Los Angeles. And so basically how that goes is you ain't allowed to go up there. And so you got to sneak in the building. Mm. You got to walk past the front desk with your head down while you're carrying all your camera equipment, your lights, and all that. Good morning, <laughs> security. Good, Good morning. morning. <laughs> and so you put your head down and you act like you belong there. So the lady last night, she wasn't having it. She caught on. But we still snuck up in the elevator. We got to the top, and within five minutes of being on top of the helipad, some dude came up. You guys know you guys can't be up here, right? Wait, what do you mean? Like... Oh, we're just taking photos. Like, the helipad. We, we didn't know that. <laughs> we opened like four doors that said trespassing. <laughs> all, all people who go past this door will be prosecuted. And so I'm still here. Didn't get, it, didn't get arrested, didn't get in trouble, so. And what were you guys doing? Like pictures, drone shit? Yeah, we were just doing some pictures, but we didn't really have time to do much because mm. uh, because we got kicked out. How many people did you go with? Two other people, so Two people. three of us. Were they both white? Yeah, one's like a Middle Eastern mix, but uh, yeah. I think about this, being half white, all the daredevil shit, high adrenaline shit, is always white people. And I've always respected that because whenever someone's hanging off a cliff or some shit, or jumping in the middle of the, it's always a white person. Always, yeah, that is true. Hey. I've done some daredevil. <laughs> why is that? Do you have an idea of why, whenever it's like a big bug getting held or a spider or something, it's a white person holding it. They're always the bravest. So thank you. You've definitely done a backflip off a cliff or into a lake or something. I have done a backflip <laughs> into a lake. I was, thinking, I was technically like off a bridge. Boom. <laughs> Two and one. The, the bridge backflip. The, big, the bridge backflip. There's got to be some sort of reason for that. Like a cultural thing. There was this one trip we went on to Horseshoe Bend. Have you guys been there? Where's that? I imagine it's shaped like a horseshoe. Like every time I look at the picture, I'm like, damn. Why did I do that? Basically, like I went to the edge and I did a cool like, I'm risky like that. But from where I was, it didn't look anything crazy. I was like, one pebble slip, I could have been at the bend. So I said, bro, what, why didn't you tell me there was a whole cliff right there? But I look back at that picture and it gives me anxiety every time I look at it, I'm like, damn. I really could have just slipped and just been done. Same same thing. There's a place called Vasquez Rocks, probably like 45 minutes north of uh, Los Angeles. And uh, it's basically just a bunch of like big rock formations. And so me and my buddy thought it would be a good idea to go up there for sunrise, you know, wake up early and uh, go hit it. And I'm in my adventurous era. So <laughs> I'm on top of the steep rocks that like forms to a tip at the top. And I'm, I brought my drone and I'm like standing on top top of this like trying to hold my balance and also try to fly a drone and i looked back in the moment i was like oh like, this is cool like whatever it's for the shot and then when i got back to my computer i realized like if i took like one step in either in any direction i would have fell like 100 feet but that's what makes it adventurous it's the, it's the adrenaline thing it's and adrenaline. and that's why i never do that shit. i feel like every kid to some extent has some story that they've done in their life that could have like you gotta have those put stories. themselves in jail or like hurt like there's something about being young where that lack of prefrontal cortex is just not developed all the way you think you're invincible you think that like oh nothing's <laughs> gonna happen to me and then by the grace of god nothing usually happens but y'all had some close encounters i guess i don't work regret anything because yeah like you said it builds character you don't want to live your life scared because well, then you went you to the limit and now you're like and i'm not gonna go that far anymore you know you, now you, you created a boundary where you're like that's how far i will push my extremities exactly yeah. that's why i like to look Boom. at it too so you can like create those boundaries for yourself and like kind of give you a structure on how to live life it's like rob survival guide of how to like <laughs> 
you know, <laughs> you kind of like acquire all these different skills and, and these like limits you have on yourself and you have a mental like note of what you can do and what you can, what you're comfortable with. But that's why I always say get out of your comfort zone. You get with the one ugly chick and then you're like, never that again. And then you know where your limits are. I went into a little river one time, a lake with my water shoes on. I was a kid and I felt a little fish nibble on my toe. I haven't been in a lake since. That's nature, dude. Uh, speaking of fish, actually, uh, where I'm from, there's a bunch of sharks. Oh, and so, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so last summer, this this uh, guy was boogie boarding in the ocean. All Something I would never do, ever. All of a sudden, uh, a big great white comes up. Yeah, he didn't make it back. Oh shit, he actually died? Yeah. So what I'm getting here is Ryan hasn't really like tested his extremities, because it seems like me and Rob have been in some situations where like I probably shouldn't have been there, but I'm not gonna do it again. We need to start a new series on the channel, Rhino Tries. That honestly is a funny thing, getting Ryan to do things he shouldn't, he wouldn't want to do. <laughs> There's a lot of because... things that you would, that a lot of people have done that he has not, that you haven't done. Mm. I've never watched Star Wars. What's like the first thing you should do? Skydive. See, I just have no urge to do that. Like, I don't feel like I'm missing out, but that's because I haven't done it. So I don't know what I'm missing. But yeah, I just never, no roller coasters. We've been on planes with bad turbulence, so you got to take I've got scarred from that. I don't like <laughs> flying anymore. I turned Damn. into an old man. Maybe that's just not my personality. That's maybe, true. Maybe I'm just not into thrill seeking. I'm scared to take the Tylenol because I'm like, man, what if it yeah. has an adverse reaction? That's why I never understood like drug use. I'm like, how could you even get to the point of taking it one time? Even like vape, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, what if I get a head rush? I don't even know what that feels like. This was something interesting that we noticed last night. We went to our last basketball game. Harvard Westlake versus Eleanor Roosevelt. It was the last minute. They hit us up at like 30 minutes before the game. We're like, all right, we'll come, we'll come. Me and Ryan were standing in the student section. Yeah. That was a, uh, I kept, I didn't know if you wanted to switch to the other side because like they had a lot of energy. It was a lot to handle. The, and one of the kids, I was just standing here the whole time just like enjoying the game. And then they're all screaming and barking. And, and I was like, oh. And anytime the opposing player does something bad, fuck you, bitch, you fat as shit, motherfucker, bitch. And I'm like, I was like, um, oh, they, <laughs> they're meaner than I thought they were in the first games. I was like, oh, they really talking shit here. I can't even repeat the shit they were saying. <laughs> no, you but, can't. And I guess in the last vlog, I roasted, they were, I roasted them for chanting, you suck toes to the player. And then they confronted me at the game. They're like, hey, you were ripping us apart for saying you suck toes chants. And the only reason we did that is because the kid on the other team actually has a picture of him sucking toes and it went viral across the whole school. And I was like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, he really did suck toes. I thought y'all thought that was a stupid chant. It was almost fun being back though, because I was like, man, taunting and bullying. I was like, oh yeah, this is this is good character building shit right here. Something I, I thought was interesting was they were always asking like dating advice from us. Yo, Rhino, look at what I got. So this girl, I was gonna ask her to prom and then look what I said to her. You think this is good? He showed me what this girl said to him. Hey, I heard you were gonna ask me to prom or something. I think you're cool and sweet, but I only see you as a friend. So blah, blah, blah. And then he put some like four paragraph response. And I was like, brother, I'm not even gonna read your response. You said too much, bro. She just, she, she called you cool, nice and sweet. Just say all good, cause she just rejected you. But So on top of our support, we were becoming life coaches there for these young men. But then they don't realize, hey, this girl is using you for free attention, free validation. You're giving her exactly what she wants. Like, uh -huh. oh yeah, we broke up, but like he still likes me and I can get him back if I want. I was texting this girl senior year. We had been in class for three years together. We're flirting, talking, and I was like, do you know who you're going to prom with? He definitely knows who it is, but he hasn't asked me yet. And I knew it was me. And I'm like, that's funny. Do you think he's gonna do a prom proposal for you? Well, it has to be big because I'm a senior and like, unless he has to go all out and has to be a big proposal, but yeah, he definitely knows I wanna go with him, but he just has to do that. And I was like, okay, settle up, buckle up. What am I gonna do? And I put together, I put in so much effort and we ended up not even going to the prom together. So here's how that happened. Can I pause you right yeah, now? Yeah, go for it. Just you saying that this girl was like, oh, if he does ask me, it needs to be big. Yep. The balls for her to say that. Yep, I mean, I was like, Crazy? and young, me was whatever you want sugar pump versus like what you mean it gotta be big i went to like michael's got five different canvas like backboards whiteboards p-r-o-m question mark bedazzle bedazzle like painted all this thing had five girls ready to go to hold each letter for me because i was going to reveal the big question in front of everybody in front of the stairs it was literally a movie and i have the footage but i'm not gonna play that i was working at a daycare at the time so after school i asked all the children i was like hey can you uh say this little clip for me and i had all these cute little two to five year old kids be like will you go to prom with with mr noah and i had a montage compilation of all these cute ass kids asking her no one needs a prom date would you be the one to go put together that whole movie had it in video form and at the end of the video i was like 
if you want to go with me, meet me in the hallway. And I had this video play at lunchtime, had like 40 girls all put her in the classroom. Her best friend texts me, we're watching the video now. She's like crying, she can't believe it. Boom, hit on my football friend, said take everybody from the cafeteria when they get out of that room, bring him into the auditorium. Have my friend in the multimedia class, said bring everybody from the back end. I had the whole school plus administrators pull up and meet right in the middle of the hallway and on the top of these like 40 foot stairs, dressed up in a, a suit without the, the blazer, had everybody hold the letters, I'm holding flowers, had my friend film her entire reaction from the classroom to when the stairs, comes out, big reveal, everybody's like, oh, sh Came down, gave her the flowers, hugged it out, she said yes, and then three weeks later, she was like, I heard some things that you were saying about me, things feel awkward now, yeah, I don't wanna go with you anymore, and I have a date already, and I was like, Yo. Bro, and I had a week left to find a prom date. I did, but I was just like, bruh. But her new prom date, two days before, broke his foot. So when we were at prom and I walked out the door with my new date, I passed by and I just have this shot in my head where they were sitting at a round table and they were both sitting down and he had crutches and she couldn't dance the whole night because he broke his foot. So, and I was like, even if you don't like me, just go to the date, just do the prom with me just because of this. Like, bro, I, it was so embarrassing for me yeah, to tell everybody crazy. like, yeah, so that didn't work out. Look at you now. Look at you now. And where is she? We don't know. We don't know. <laughs> and that's why a lot of girls are like, where are the nice guys at? Well, I'm broken now. That fucked me up where I didn't want to do that ever again. So it's like... Men think that if I do nice for her, <coughs> she will be nice to me or she will like it. And mm -hmm. that is not necessarily how it works all the time. Mm -hmm. The kid in the bleacher was like, yo, Rhino, what's an appropriate amount of money to spend on my girlfriend for, um, for her birthday? And I said, how long y'all been dating? He said, two months. I might not even worry about getting a gift necessarily, like, or maybe something small like a small token of appreciation men naturally like to give and girls don't like hearing this because then they'll think well not me i want a guy that as nice and sweet and this stuff and i get so much shit for saying like don't give a girl flowers don't listen to rhino do it damn do it and find out what works in dating when i see these guys struggling these young kids the stuff that actually works and good advice isn't politically correct it sounds bad if you want to give someone medicine aka truth a little truth pill. You gotta make sure you put some Kool-Aid with it so that they can actually digest it. Because if you give someone too much medicine, they're, they're gonna reject it and be like, ah, I don't like the sound of that. Mm -hmm. That don't sound nice. That's not no. ethical. But reality isn't ethical and reality isn't moral and nice. So I remember when he said, what should I say to this girl? I said, bro, you're treating her like a celebrity. She's gonna treat you like a fan. Mm. Last thing about my favorite high school crowd. Whenever people come up to us, they love asking, bro, follow me back, bro. Noah. Follow me back. Can I get the follow back, brother? Bro, they were pushing me. This kid, he had zero posts, and he was like, you follow me back, right? Post something. I'll post something tonight for you. No, 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 I'll post something now. Why don't you have any followers? And I didn't really grill him too much, but I could see why he would want me to follow him. That will always amaze me. Whenever I hear that, I'm like, did he just? Yup. Why would they ask that? Because then it's like, well, they're kids, Rhino. Like, let them be kids. I didn't act like that when I was younger. Bro, even when I went to, like, VidCon when I was, like, 16 and I saw all my favorite YouTubers, you, like, you're vulnerable. Like, I'm there right next to them. No security talk to them. I didn't think, like, can I get you, can you follow me on Instagram? Can I get your number? I was like, I got my picture. Said, you make hilarious, entertaining videos. You make my day. I just kept going. I never, I never pushed. Because it's not every kid. It's not every kid that says that. But yeah. when it happens, I'm like, that just keep happening. Bruh. I'm at Raising Cane's. I mean, this happens all the time. But I'm at Raising Cane's meet a group of kids it's all laughs and smiles we're taking pictures and then i'm in my car and then they knock on my car yo bro can i can i get the follow back maybe bro like damn bro no i don't know you <laughs> Um, last night, yeah, right off, <laughs> follow back, right? Can I get a follow back? And then I said, let me, let me see your Instagram. He pulls it up. I mean, weak ass page. It was weak, <laughs> it was weak brother. And I'm like, how many posts you got? He he got four, four posts in the last six months. And I said, now why would I want to follow that? I was being serious. He's probably watching this right now. Yeah, sorry. Um, they are watching this because they roasted me when we we're talking about the blog. Like, they, they watch these. <laughs> and he, was, he was nice otherwise, but and I'm not going to treat him different just because he's younger than me. It's like, dude, you're a sentient being with sentient thoughts. Like, you know what you're doing. I said, why would I follow that? He's like, I don't just look, I got like football highlights and stuff. And I was like, now why would I want to follow that though? You got four posts in the last six months. Like you don't even post. Why would I follow that? You don't even got content. And just to cut all that, bro, we're not even friends. I don't, <laughs> I do not know you at the end of the day. And that's what they, they're like, I know you say you don't fuck people you don't know. It's like, yeah, that's, and that's, that's it. I don't know you. I don't, I don't really know you. But. You got to have a page that's worth following. And yeah. then I'll follow it. If you are a bad bitch with a fat ass, there's more incentive for me to follow. The fat ass was in my head before. I didn't want to say it out loud. I'm like, if you have that, okay. Okay, but fat ass in 21 and up, obviously, but. If a girl with a fat ass is like, follow me, I'm like, you know what? Let me see the page. You know what? I can work with that. Follow. How often does that happen to you, Rob? Like, the follow me back. 
Does that happen? The chair is kind of... You need to put some WD-40 on that. Oh, they're all like that, too. Did people ask you to follow them back? Um, oh, there. yeah, I, I get that a handful of times. Mm. I just never know what to say. I'm just always like, I only follow people I know, man. Like, some people are just not aware. They're not self-aware to the point where it's like, why would you ask someone that you don't know to follow you back on your page? Everybody wants followers but doesn't want to be a leader. <laughs> This is an interesting segue. I had this in my notes of what I wanted to talk about, which was NPCs in general. This might sound a bit mean or critical, but I've noticed that a lot of people lack self-awareness. A lot of people I interact with, I don't feel as though they have personalities. They've got TikTok brain and are nothing more than what they witness on TikTok or their, what their friends do. They're not like individuals. I interact with you right in front of my face. <laughs> Noah too, dude, he's right here. And that's why I don't fuck with these guys. Um, I just keep, and maybe this is me being an elitist or whatever, but when we're out on the street interviewing people, asking them questions or whatever, or interacting with people, there are people I meet that are real individuals with their own personality, their own spunk and whatever. And a lot of people, they're just like these robots. They're like these gray orbs. Sorry to say it, like a gray lifeless orb where I'm like, is anyone in there? And that's what the world is. It's always been like that. You've just got to, you know, experience all that and take it all in like a lot of people probably don't so like a lot of people are just npcs amongst other npcs but it's like almost always been like that probably yeah it's always always been it probably gotten worse with the brain rot of social media and most people just probably consume too much and don't even know who they are but uh, <laughs> that's it they, it's like but yeah, they're they, they, yeah but they always could have always been there and because you have and me have both gone out and spoke to so many and see so many when you actually do talk to a, a random person off the just outside like huh? i noticed that too with how people interact in their day-to-day -day, they're very they don't think before they say something or do something and they're on this autopilot let's say it's a grocery store worker or some worker that i'll bump into they'll have this nasty attitude or something like that i had an incident where this lady was being very rude to me i was it was at the auntie auntie ann's pretzel thing and she was just being a total biatch she said we ain't got that and I was like, damn, are you good? <laughs> I said that to her. She was, and she's like, the point I'm trying to make here is like, I think before I say something, all these people are just on autopilot where they're angry, so I'm gonna be pissed today. And now everyone that says something to me, I'm gonna be pissed at them. And I was just like, damn. That's why if someone's being mean to you, just tell them like, are you having a bad day today? And then it kind of takes them back like, oh, it's <laughs> it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh fuck, I was just being mean to somebody. Yeah. Because they probably expect you to be like, give them a snarky attitude back. Because even if I'm pissed, I don't act like that at, out in the world. I'm also, I'm trying to be individual because I started this new thing that it's like gonna catch fire and like be a cultural. I'm putting this comb in, in my hat. Mm. Did you guys notice that? I've seen that, yeah. I was trying to, I was looked at it earlier, I was just trying to see what you're trying to do. Uh -huh. It's like a thing that I'm starting. Does, okay. it, does it like, does it like hurt? Does it feel weird? Nah, if you wear head fitted hats, you just stick the comb in. Okay. Let's see how it looks without the glasses, so I think. I'm wearing the glasses right now because I'm sick, so I look crazy. But, but this is how you would normally rock it. This is how you rock it, ready? Hold on, ready? Oh, damn, it's the whole thing. It's a metal Do you use comb, it though, too, or no? Yeah, I do. Let me look in the mirror real quick, make sure I get the right. Now, I have a bigger one, but just this one is what I'm rocking right now. It's, it's a new trend. Oh, what's up, guys? And yeah, that's table for two, please. Then you do the Jake Paul gotcha hat, and then it's like, hey, dude. And what you do is because you put the comb and you like, put it in your hair. So now it like won't fall out. So this can come off and it stays in my head. Yeah. From afar, it kind of looks like a sideburn. <laughs> okay, so. Like an Alvis sideburn. This isn't my exact comb I always use. No, but isn't that like, can I do that? Or is that just like a black thing? You like, you know, with the combs in the hair? I can't be doing this, can I? Try it, it's not, it's not a pick, it's a comb. See if it, hold on now. Let me, I have another. You might be onto something. <laughs> Cause like, I have a black, I have a black comb that's a bit longer that I was using. Let me, I could bring that up real quick. Now, what made you just decide to kind of intuition? Pure, pure creativity and intuition. It's almost like a, oops. I respect the attempt of trying to start like a new trend. Like everyone's too afraid to get out of their comfort zone. Hey, that is a bold move. This is like, this is a little bit of a maybe just a rhino thing. Imagine I pull up to the thing. Oh, what's up, guys? Nice to meet you. Blah 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 blah. You see it. They'd be like, what the fuck? This guy got a comb in his head for it. It's like something that has to get picked up. Like, 
Right now, people are might think it's weird. I just I'm, I'm starting it right now, and you guys saw it first. Okay. Okay. This is the color. Okay. I've been, I would I've been doing this out in public for the last week, and it's just to me I'm like, yeah, I just started something. No one knows it yet, bro. Just watch. I mean, I didn't question. I look at it like, why he's got a comb? I was like, oh, he just that's just what he wants to do. One day I went to the, a restaurant, and I was like, man, let me just put this in here, and then I say. I just did something. DM me pictures of y'all doing this, bro, out in public. I can't wait till y'all see how big it gets. You could actually do use anything. You could kind of use anything. You. And this, see, this is actually more like if you think about it, because you can, you could drink from it. I put on my story. I was like, hey, what topic do you guys want me to talk about in the vlogs? Mental health or anxiety or your mindset and stuff like that. I enjoy talking about that because we all have minds. Yeah. And mental health. Yeah. I was just thinking, they said, uh, the other thing they wanted to, us to talk about was Ryan Garcia. Apparently he's, I just- I've been seeing that, I've been seeing that everywhere actually. It's his Twitter, he's tweeting all these November, fit, February, April this, I'm gonna die, or this happened and to all my fans, no, I'm good. They locked my credit cards, if I if I go, I'm, it's cause of them. It's all this cryptic, but he's like, people are saying he's hacked, but he's not acting. People are saying he's trolling in a bad way. He basically said, well, he got abducted by the higher ups or the elites and they took him to this demonic sort of ritual where he's seen some things that I, you know, we're not gonna mention here, but <laughs> some very outlandish stuff he's been saying on Twitter. I mean, X, my bad. So I don't know. I of no, part of me wants to think like it's just a marketing scheme for the fight coming up. It's almost like too much. Like it's too much I though. Think yeah. That Devin Amy is popularity and Ryan Garcia is already that famous. I thought the fight just announces like they're big names already. Like I didn't think they really needed to add anything to the fight. Um, but I don't know. It's like too much to the point where something seems off. And I don't know. Cause I haven't heard any like his family speak up. Like, they said uh, his, his ex what ex baby mom or ex ex wife is his wife. The baby mama said that like he's actually not okay. He needs help. Somebody pray for him. She made a whole Instagram story. When I hear Ryan Garcia, I don't think it's the same Ryan as me. Well, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> like, are there other Robs that you're like? But it ain't Rob though. Yeah, facts. Uh, that's so, true, that's true, that's true. You see what I'm saying? Damn, that's true. You guys get the same name. I didn't even register that. I was like, you know what? I liked watching his fights. He seems like a charismatic dude. Oh, he's going through a mental health crisis. He's acting crazy. Ain't got shit to do with me. And I think what people do is they care about too much shit that doesn't involve them. I think that's where people's mental health goes down the fucking gutter. Cause they wake up and they're like, oh my God. And did you hear about Ryan Garcia? Yeah. And oh my God, this happened. And this thing just happened. And pray for this thing. And oh my God, there's this new, and there was a shooting here. Yeah, you can be happy, sad, emotional, all within four swipes. And then you're exhausted after five minutes looking at your phone, and now you're upset, and it's only the beginning of the day, and you didn't even do shit yet. And everything's fear-mongering now online. Facts. Every, everything, everything's breaking news, this. Like, yeah, it's yo. Like, it used to just be the news would display all the bad stuff, mm -hmm. and you're like, I'm gonna turn the TV off. But now it's on your Instagram, your Twitter, your Snapchat, right away. And then you never know underlying agendas or anything like that, that people talk about. Yeah, are there higher up elites? I don't know. And if there are, what are you gonna do about it? I like wow. to stay in tune with what's going on though. If you can strategically stay up to date with things you're entertained with or just do it in a healthy, manageable way, which don't let it is hard. Mm -hmm. Don't let somebody else's problems consume your own problems, obviously. Yeah, if you're, if you're waking up worrying about someone else's life that isn't directly maybe your mother's in a hospital or something, if you're concerned about other people's shit, you're doing the wrong thing, in my opinion. Cause like, it's so much easier to worry about everybody else's bullshit and this is happening and save the fucking turtles and Ryan Garcia is having a mental breakdown on Instagram. It's and, like, dude, yeah. don't you have a, a school assignment to do? And no one's gonna tell you to stop scrolling. No one's gonna tell you to get off the app. So you almost have to look at yourself and maybe look at your um, app time. You know, you can go to your settings mm. and see. Like, you know, maybe I should stop or only do it for a certain amount of time. You gotta think about it now though. You can find just as much good stuff as bad stuff online every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like Noah's viral right now online. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's good. So you gotta take that risk. Mr. Take that risk. I'm Get it. Alive, like we now, how has that been feeling? Has your ego been inflated? Yeah. Yeah. It's hard because the online numbers, because I've been so used to all of us like getting millions of views on videos and this and this, seeing a couple extra followers and a couple extra likes, had never, like I think my dopamine receptor has been burnt out. If anything, it's just cool. I don't feel like, yeah, I'm that guy. Cause I still can't really process it. It's not until like Rob's like, yo, did you know you're really going viral? Or my sister's like, 
yo, all my students are seeing me on your For You page, or my high school friends are sending me the video that I already posted on my Instagram, like, bro, did you see this guy made this reel about you? I'm like, yeah, I have, so. Yeah, bro, it's me. <laughs> I, shit. I understand <laughs> how big it is, but it's almost like so big, I can't grasp because, you know, I was trying to look up the TikToks, and I literally found another 100 on top of the 200 I already saved, so. I mean, it's dope. I think we, 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 uh, we talked about off camera, where it's just like, isn't it cool that like, my old ass photos get to like, get to live again? Like these photos that I was just doing for fun because I was a sneakerhead hype beast in high school, get a second life. I think that it's cool that I get to keep posting old shit that is done and gone, but it is immortalized because other people want to just look at it or they want to feel nostalgic again or they remember where they were in that era. I mean, without the YouTube numbers and stuff, a lot of other people in my hometown were dressed in the same exact way. It wasn't just me. So I think it's cool that I get to be kind of like, I don't know, the, the finger to point at. I, I, I think it's fine. I think the only thing that's affected me is, yeah, like when I go in public, like right now, officially, it's not fun to go to the mall. There's been like, went to Macy's at Toronto Polo, came out, 20 kids just staring at me. And I'm like, did, when did they see me? I saw one, I clicked on it, clicked on their page. They had 20K followers and their only 10 posts were all of me. I'm like, if y'all want free clout, go to my second Instagram, go on TikTok, just screen, literally use the same photos. I've seen the same exact swipe, but what I think it's cool is it's actually keeps evolving into new phases. So one, it was 2024 no versus 2015. As of like the last two days, I'm seeing everybody just take my photos and it's like how I look at my mom after she yells at me and it's like me just like standing there stiff. And I'm like, wait, it's now like changed oh because everybody's God. like, we get it. He was with the black people, he dressed like that and he looks like this now, but now they're just literally using the old photos and coming up with captions like it's bigger than we think uh -huh. it's very it's very hard to process so what's dope is that it's not like a viral video it's it's <laughs> viral multiple pictures plus it's a trend yes bro <laughs> plus it's a trend attached to a song so it's like almost like a oh and what you didn't know was i went on somebody one of my friends sent it to me i forgot how you could check for like all weekend i was the number third trending search on tiktok he sent me a screenshot oh it was like God. it had like he went to the back end that's gotta be like the meme of the year so far right and then i was telling somebody like yeah so i'm trying to make this like funny thing with this i'm gonna come out with this to kind of like amplify it before it dies out and they were like why is have to die out i was like it's, i don't know maybe it won't like you said it's it's an evolving thing that's happening because it was so good they already used all the the jokes and stuff from the first like wave of the trend now it's like how can you use these photos for a new trend same thing and it's like people are still using it It had like 300 000 likes with the one i seen yesterday i said what <laughs> this is just one pic uh-huh uh, me and ryan talked about where i was like i have so many photos they're like you could literally use me or you could do whatever with them i don't know it's just but i, I still don't know how to process it i didn't do anything somebody decided to just scroll down make this thing and then it popped off and whoever started that like and that's when it happens when you least expect it like mm -hmm. that's so random that you blew up viral i blew viral without trying to be viral you can try like that's crazy what we were talking about there is how we don't even know how viral and big it is it's, you can't even fathom how Again, big we it's are still in the moment though that's why it hasn't even passed yet so that's you, the weird you don't even know until like years from now i'm like damn that was a big ass viral trend in judging from what i've seen and like i keep leaning into like repurposing some of the jokes i have only seen it keep growing mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how long this can go on for. You never, this is the vo most viral thing that's happened to you, right? Or what, yeah, I mean, yeah, what did you say? What did you yeah, say? This, like, this has to be, but it's a- uh, This is a crazy moment. But like, it does help that we've built a brand for the past 10 years. Yeah. Like that's lit that that work has been done. So this allows this to happen now. And that's what also makes it even better because when you see a meme, it's just a random person. Like, they don't have a background. They don't hey, have Imagine this was my first thing ever. I'm just, let's say it's, I'm wearing these exact clothes right now, whatever. I'm 16 years old and I'm going viral for my outfits. Never but did Love Those Serve, never did Charlotte Park, nothing. But I, like my whole personality was just being a sneaker hype beast reseller that I was. And then it dies out. I'm like, and I just keep trying to wear those clothes until I'm 35. This adds an and then element to the whole thing. <laughs> the concept of people coming up to us. Yeah. I'm just so eternally grateful. I I went to this restaurant the other day. I was so sick at the time. Sneezing, I had it snot all over myself and shit. And I'm ordering, like, can I get the tomato soup? And then I see two kids walk in. I'm like, oh, they want to get to get a picture. And I'm like, <laughs> fucking shit. Um, Yo, can we get a picture? I'm like, yeah, guys, let's do it. And like, have a good one. I walked out and I was just like, I am so grateful that I get to 
live this life where people want to come up and take a photo. Yeah. I think because we've just constantly never stopped, mm -hmm. there is like that respect there of like, well, yeah, he already makes good content. They all make good content, but like, damn, they're still doing it. Like, it is a nice thing. Even if you don't watch ever again, I have people all the time that are like, yo, that's, you love the server, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't watch anymore, but like, your content's so good. I'm like, no, that's fine, that's, that's fine. But like, it's cool that you even still remember the channel, you remember all those years, and you know that I still make videos. And uh, I mean, we have to pat ourselves on the back sometimes. That's where I don't want to like, my ego doesn't need to be too inflated, but like, we have put in a lot of hours and effort into the stuff we you put out. You look at the OG YouTubers and that, that made videos back then, a lot of them don't make videos anymore. Mm -hmm. I would say it's hard to adapt in this day and age of social media and content creation. So yeah, the fact that we were all able to kind of make videos throughout the years and now we can look back and we have eras within our content, stuff we're not doing anymore or stuff like, so it's always, like you said, it's cool that we're able to do stuff like that whether you watch it or not, we're gonna do some new so yep. me looking through all my old pics, seeing like, okay, what, how can I go viral? <laughs> oh, Brian and Robert just robbing him. Robbing him. Rob. Oh fuck. Nah, but Rob with his kids bopping shit, like. No, that's what I was about to say. Like, that's what, what I got. <laughs> <laughs>